Hi there, over the past couple of days, I've noticed that there is quite a bit of confusion over the use of Android Studio's data binding versus the view binding. So in this very short video, I'll try to clarify that. Let me get into Android Studio. I'm gonna make myself a new project. Let me put this project uh, somewhere such as in here, if I find my folder. Now, I'm gonna go ahead and say uh, my binding app. So this is going to be the name of my uh, folder. So what I wanna be doing in here is first talking about what is it that we are talking about and then uh, show you a solution for it. When you go to Android Studio, you go for instance to your layout and in the layout, let's say I wanna build myself a uh, text view or a button or anything like that. So I'm gonna drop myself a button in here uh, because this isn't really about that. I'm simply gonna you know, horizontally and vertically align this to the center. And I'm gonna call this one my button. And when I do this, the expectation or at least the way that the view binding used to work is that when you come to your main activity, you go to the place that the content view of it is set to the activity main and you should be able to say my button and then whatever comes after it. However, that is not really how it works anymore simply because the view binding that was used to be a part of the Kotlin X is now removed, at least as of uh, version, I think, uh, 3.9, if I'm not wrong about that. Don't quote me on that. However, uh, what we want to be doing is we want to find the solution for this. One solution is using the data binding. So the first thing is using data binding. And in data binding, we do something like this. We say, well, my button becomes find view by I ID, the type is button, and then from the resources.id my button. And now we have access to my button. Something that I do for myself, and I really highly recommend that you do as well, is that in situations like this, when I want to do data binding, I always add a suffix to my component. So for instance, I say my button.id. And then in my activity, this one is called my button. That is the one that has an ID at the end of it. This way I will know which one is the one that is actually the button that I can access and which one is the accessor of it in the, in the layout that I have for it. However, this approach isn't always uh, working. And one of the bigger challenges with it is that if you have many different activities, this uh, resource.id will access all of those. And if you could access the view binding, which was directly accessing stuff that is in this activity layout, it would actually be quite beneficial. Uh, the good news is there is a solution for that. I'm gonna show you how that works. The very first thing that you wanna be doing is in here, in your Gradle, at the module level of your Gradle. In the Android, what you wanna be enabling is this. You wanna say build features, and then within the build features, you wanna say view binding true. So you wanna enable the view binding in the Android of the uh, Gradle module level. And as you can imagine, every time that we make a change in here, we must uh, synchronize. So I'm gonna go in here and say sync now, which basically is going to sync everything. And now we have access to the view binding. However, this new view binding, which is a part of the uh, Jetpack, it doesn't really work like the old one. There is a little bit of a work that uh, we still have to do in here. The first part of it is in here, in your activity, you actually have to get access to the binding. And to do that, I'm gonna say var, uh, we usually call it binding, and the binding in this case becomes activity and activity main binding, which basically is a class that Android Studio builds, which holds on to everything that is in this activity. This isn't the class that you're supposed to edit or modify or anything, you're just supposed to read the content from it. Of course, because I'm not initializing it right away, I'm gonna make this a late in its variable. Now, from this point on, you have to do two more things before you can actually uh, access all of your variables. So the very first thing is I'm gonna delete this because we are not doing data binding anymore. Then I'm gonna go into my uncreate and before setting my content view, I'm gonna say binding. Binding becomes this uh, particular value. And the value for that is simply this. I'm gonna go ahead and say this type activity main binding, the class that Android Studio builds for us, 
dot inflate and what are we inflating we're inflating the layout inflator so basically binding becomes an object of the type activity main binding by inflating the layout inflator and the moment you're done with that then you can get access to binding dot root which is the root of this view so i'm going to go ahead and say uh val view i'm going to say it is binding dot root and I'm gonna put that as my content view. I know it seems like there's quite a few steps, but in fact, there's only two steps. One of them is this, adding the built features, and then the second one is getting binding and placing it in your content view. If you want to, you can actually do this directly without having the view. So I'm gonna eliminate that line. And also the assumption that I have in here, and that's my default assumption, is that this binding is supposed to be used in many, many functions other than the onCreate. If that's not the case, you can do this entire part uh, directly in here. So you can eliminate this whole line in here and you can say var binding becomes directly that one. However, I'm gonna keep it the way it is in here. And now that we have that, we have access to everything. So for instance, if I have an outlet in here and that outlet is called my button ID, I can simply go in here and say binding dot my button ID and I can directly access the button and for instance say set on click listener do whatever uh, like I said if we are accessing it like this I like to eliminate the ID at the end of the names I only use that when I know I'm uh, doing something that uh, depends on uh, data binding so I'm actually going to call this my button I'm going to refactor everything and here I have to get rid of that now and say my button so any outlet that now you have in your XML file you can directly access access it so if I have this text view called uh, the text view for instance I can simply go to main activity and then I could say binding dot the text view dot text becomes hello Kotlin or anything to that effect and that's pretty much it so uh, either you have to access things using the data binding or you have to use the new uh, view binding which is the part of the jetpack uh, there are several advantages to this this makes sure that nothing is uh, optional nothing is nullable because when you do access binding dot the text view it certainly is there it is built and because of that it's a lot safer to use this and that's uh, pretty much the end of this uh, video